acroasis tertia decima de imperfecta tempore on the imperfect tense. This corresponds with pages 40 through 42 in Wheelock's Latin. Recognitio, tempus praesens, the present tense. Remember that Latin has six tenses. The present active indicative is the only tense that we have seen so far, which for the time being we'll just call the present. Remember about the present that it only is happening right now. So let's look at a verb that appears in this chapter. Cano canare, to have dinner. And so we have the verb canant. Canant can be translated in any one of these three ways. We see they dine. This is referred to as the simple past in English. We could also say they are dining. This is referred to as the present progressive in English. And then for emphasis, we can say they do dine with the auxiliary verb do. They dine. They are dining. They do dine. Imperfectum tempus, the imperfect tense. This is new to you, so you'll want to take special notes on it. I'll pause along the way in order to encourage you to write three things down in your notes. Please label these notes. When we're talking about grammar, the term perfect doesn't mean flawless. The term perfect means completed. And so when we talk about the imperfect tense, we are referring to things in the past as an ongoing circumstance. So for example, we have the verb kenabant. So we have the possibilities of translating this would be circumstantially. They were dining. Habit. They used to dine. Attempt. They were trying to dine. They were beginning to dine. And these meanings are built into the imperfect. In English, we have several different ways of expressing this idea, but all of those meanings are implicit in the imperfect forms that we see in Latin. So let's look at the formation of the imperfect. This is the formula which I want you to write down, so I'm going through it very slowly for your benefit so that you can write it down in your notes. We're going to take the present stem, this is just like a mathematical formula, and we'll add to it an infix. This infix for the imperfect is the two letters BA, BA. So present stem plus BA. And then to the present stem plus the infix, we will add the personal endings. And the most of these you already know. So present stem plus the infix BA plus your personal endings. And that's how you make the imperfect. So we'll take this example verb. This occurs in this chapter, culpo, culpare, culpavi, culpatum. Now, think for a moment. What is the present stem of this verb? Do you remember? To find the present stem of a verb, we go to the second principal part. We remove the re, and, that, and we use what's left behind. So if you think you know what the present stem is, write it down, because we'll be using it for this conjugation. Culpo culpare, as you may recall, means to blame or to censure. And so let's go ahead and look at what we have. So we have culpabam. Notice that we have the present stem culpa. We have the infix ba, ba. And then we have the personal ending for first person singular, M. Notice that in the imperfect, we use M as an alternate for O. So, culpa, ba, m. Culpa, bam. Notice the stress accent is on the A. And it can be translated in one of three ways. 
I was blaming, I used to blame, or simply I blamed. So moving on to the second person singular, we have culpabas. Notice that we have the present stem, culpa, the infix, ba, and the second person singular ending that you already know. And as you could as you could surmise, we have you were blaming, you used to blame, you blamed. Third person singular, we have culpabat. And our translation is he was blaming, he used to blame, he blamed. At this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and on your own paper finish this conjugation as best you can. When you have finished writing it out along with the English translations, resume the video and check your work. So let's continue and you're going to check your work. Culpa bamus. We were blaming, we used to blame, we blamed. Culpa batis. You were blaming, you used to blame, you blamed. Culpabant. They were blaming, they used to blame, they blamed. Let's try one more verb for practice. Let's practice more with the imperfect. So for an example, I have given you the verb from your vocabulary, maneo, manere, mansi, mansum, to remain, stay behind, abide, continue. What I will ask of you now, or presently, is to conjugate the verb maneo, manere, in the imperfect, and when you have finished that, to translate the third person singular and the first person plural. Please write out all three possible translations that have been suggested up to this point for the third person singular and the third first person plural. Please pause the video and write out the conjugation and do the translations of the third person singular and the first person plural. Let us resume. So we have, say them with me, manebam, manebas, manebat, manebamus, manebatis, manebant. And look at your translation for the third person singular. You should have on your paper, he was staying, he used to stay, he stayed. And for the first person plural, we were staying, we used to stay, we stayed. Now, it would be unfair of me to deprive you of a complete set, so let's look at the remaining translations. I was staying, I used to stay, I stayed. You were staying, you used to stay, you stayed. You were staying, you used to stay, you stayed. They were staying, they used to stay, they stayed. Very straightforward. Now, let's take these out of the chart and use them within the context of real speech. Patrick and Markella, the you went to the Narat. Peppermint Patty talks to Marcy about their youth. For her, that was when she was a year younger than she is right now. So let's look at the following sentences, and I'm going to give them to you partially translated in Latin, and you'll supply me the verb. We always used to have much leisure. We always think better, things were better back in the day. And so let's look at this sentence. Otium semper, and we need our verb. Take a moment, think about what that would be, and write it down in your paper. If you need to, pause the video. Did you write otium semper habebamus? If you did, you were correct. The next sentence. The teacher used to help the students. Magistra discipulos, and pause the video if you need time to think about what that verb will be. Did you write uabat or ad uabat? Because if you did, you are correct. Marcy, you used to have to sit with dumb old Charlie Brown. Now this is a more complex sentence for us in English, but it's not that complex in Latin. So let's look at what we have without the main verb. Cum stolto carolo, Marcella mea, sedere. Oh, brother. Now, how would you fill that in? 
take a moment, pause the video if you need to, and write the sentence down on your paper with the verb. Did you write de bebas? If you did, you were correct. That brings us to the end of our video. And at this time, I'm going to ask you to go to the Google form that is linked to this homework assignment, send that out to us, and be sure to include any thoughtful questions you may have that will better assist us in helping you learn. All right, while that is equally.